Hello, this is Jane Goodall with a message on International Women's Day. Let's take a moment to collectively apologise for the harm we have inflicted on Mother Earth. For I would like to honour the role of mothers. Mine was amazing. She was so supportive. She gave me a wonderful start in life. I've always loved nature and animals. As a child, I was curious and fascinated by their behaviour. I didn't think of becoming a scientist. That sort of thing wasn't appropriate for women back then. I wanted to be a naturalist and a writer. And at 10 years of age, I decided I would go to Africa, live with and write books about wild animals. Everyone laughed at me. Girls didn't do things like that. But my mother supported me, saying I would have to work hard, take advantage of opportunities, and if I didn't give up, I might find a way. Well, as many of you know, I did get to Africa, had the opportunity to live with and learn from the animals most like us, chimpanzees. The fact that I was a girl was to my advantage, for my mentor, Dr. Louis Leakey, felt that women might be better in the field, more patient. I take my mother's message to young people, especially girls in disadvantaged communities around the world. And many have thanked me, saying, you taught me that because you did it, I can do it too. Today, we're trying to cope with climate change. And women only too often bear the brunt of the changing weather patterns that may lead to longer droughts, more hurricanes and flooding. These things are making the lives of some women very difficult because in some parts of the world, women are the ones not only responsible for caring for their children and feeding the family, but also farming, selling the produce and collecting firewood and water. And these things are getting more difficult. In fact, women have a quiet strength, which is often apparent during and after a disaster such as a hurricane or severe flooding. During war, too, women often stand together, supporting each other and caring for all those needing help. In 1960, when I began the chimpanzee research in Tanzania, the Gombe National Park was part of the equatorial forest belt. But by the late 1980s, it was a tiny island of forest surrounded by bare hills. There were more people living there than the land could support, too poor to buy food from elsewhere, and trees had been destroyed to get more land for growing food or to make money from timber or charcoal. It hit me then that if we didn't help these people to make a living without destroying their environment, we couldn't possibly save forest chimps or anything else. And so the Jane Goodall Institute started Takari, our method of community-led conservation working with the villagers around Gombe to improve farming methods, introduce water management programs, and improve health and education facilities. We provide some microcredit opportunities that enable women to start their own environmentally sustainable small businesses, and we provide scholarships to enable girls to have a chance of higher education. We also provide family planning information Many parents know that one way out of poverty is a good education for their children, and they can no longer afford to educate the eight or ten that were normal when I arrived. Once people understand that protecting the environment isn't just for wildlife but their own future, they become our partners in conservation. The forests are reappearing around the National Park. Existing forests throughout chimp habitat are being protected and this is working in six other African countries. All these forests are absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and regulating temperature and rainfall. Indigenous people are the traditional custodians of the earth, and in many tribes, women play a very important role in advancing a more sustainable relationship to the natural world. It's desperately important that their voices are listened to as we tackle climate change. The Paris Agreement of 2015 specifically included the need to empower women in climate decision making. And since then, all around the world, in businesses, politics, local communities and science, the role of women has increased. 
many of those urging decision makers in politics and business to take steps to control emissions of CO2 and other greenhouse gases, or protesting the destruction of the natural world for yet another road or shopping mall or oil well. Those voices are from women and girls. Because so many women are on the front line of the climate change fight, they're uniquely situated to be agents of change, to help find ways to mitigate the causes of global warming and to adapt to its impacts on the ground. And it's shocking that these women, particularly indigenous women, are, I'm told, especially vulnerable to rising threats and acts, acts of violence. I want to end by saying that because the problems we face globally are so great, it's desperately important that the voices of all those seeking to protect our future are heard, male and female, old and young. That's a message for all of us on this International Women's Day. Thank you.